This is the Asus Zephyrus Duo. I have the top of the line version with the 2080 Super Max Q and the i9 10980HK. It's a cool laptop. I had my, I still have my previous laptop, which is an Alienware 17R4, also a top of the line edition. The performance difference between this laptop and that laptop evidently isn't that big. The CPU has a performance upgrade of about 30%, uh, but the GPU side, it's actually only about 3 or 5%. Uh, and that's because despite the Alienware being about four years old now, uh, GPU technology from the 1080 through to the 2080 Super Max Q on laptops is not that big of an iteration. Now, I'm an engineer. I do engineering stuff. And I don't play that many games, so I bought a laptop like this for practicality purposes. I need it to support and improve my workflow over a 17-inch laptop. My Alienware had a 4K screen fitted. Uh, it had a 4TB hard drive, two M.2 NVMe SSDs, and a spare slot, and it, it had everything built into the machine, and that was great. It missed an SD card reader, but it had tons of I.O., two USB-C ports, etc. It made it, a, you know, it had compromises and it had other things that made up for it. This laptop is a little bit different. You've got two screens, which is nice because, as you can tell, I like lots of screens. Problem is that this laptop is designed for gamers. It's not designed for engineers, unfortunately. And this screen really doesn't angle up enough. And as you can see, I'm having to put the laptop on quite a considerable angle so that the screen is usable to me from the distance I'm sitting. And that's unfortunate. I've even had to use this rubber stop that they provide just to stop the laptop sliding. Sound is great. Keyboard is nice. Not a massive fan of the numeric touchpad, but it's nice that it's an option because I can use it as a touchpad and if I want to use it numerically, I can. The problem is that the reason I like numeric keypads is they're tactile, I can do it without looking. With this touchpad surface, that kind of goes away. It's no longer an operation where I can be totally careless and type incredibly quickly because there's no tactile feel. I don't know where stuff is. Maybe if they put some ridges into there, like a cross hatch, it wouldn't really have affected my mouse usage, I think personally, but it would have meant that it's just that bit more tactile for me to use it as a numpad. Other points, uh, you know, 15 inch screen at 4K, the, you don't really get to use the 4K because it's, at that point, the screen is so small. But I still do, I use it 125% scaling. Um, with my Alienware, it's just at 100% scaling because the screen's so much bigger. The second screen is really nice. The high resolution is nice because I can keep things small. And for me, this is fine. I know for a lot of people, that sort of size would not be practical. So. You know, I'm, I'm an edge case when it comes to that. I like that it's a touch screen. I'm not going to use it that much though. Um, AO IO on the computer is a little bit lacking. For one thing, I want to be able to plug it into a dock because it's not got the most IO. And having the USB connector on the side rather than on the back is a really, really poor option, I think. Um, whether you're using the USB-C to charge or whatever, Having it on the side is great if you're using dongles and stuff, but when I want to use a dock, it's not so great. But that, you know, I can understand this design as most people are going to use it for dongles, etc. But the problem is the charger. Having the charger input port on the side rather than on the back, that is annoying because it's this just this annoying wire and you know, most laptops have the chargers on the back corner or on the back for a reason. And so I'm not super impressed by that. Especially seeing as there is a whole bunch of I.O. in the back anyway. A USB, normal, a normal USB-A port, uh, Ethernet and HDMI. I'd much rather have got rid of, or even just move the HDMI here or something than have it there, you know. Heck, even the Ethernet. To be honest, the Ethernet would have been the port that shouldn't have been there and should have been here. Because 
most people don't use Ethernet, and most people will use a dock or something which will have an Ethernet port. But anyway, I'm going on and on and on. It's disappointing that there isn't a C port on the back. I would rather have had C than a normal USB port or whatever. Anyway, um, what else is there? Well, you know, it's a very powerful, very nice laptop. It's very portable. And I actually don't mind this layout other than the touchpad issue. Just, I feel like considering the size of the machine, which isn't as compact as it could have been, there were certain design choices that just didn't make sense on the port side. The screen being fixed at this angle, I'm not a fan of either. It would have been nice that the flap raises the screen, but it would have been nice to have the ability to manually put the screen up higher so that I can have it at whatever angle I want. This screen is also kind of dark. You can see the difference. It's, you know, it's a bit too dim for what I like, but it's manageable. I think a lot of that comes down to the touch digitizer they're using and I think it's also got pen input and you can see those layers it makes it just that little bit fuzzy uh, I mean it's still super crisp but it, there's just that fuzzy edge to it because of the additional layers other than that it's a nice laptop it's fun to use it's not worth four thousand pounds to have that additional screen there's so many 2080 super laptops out there, Max Q ones specifically, that have 17 inch screens or edge to edge displays that honestly this additional screen here, it doesn't do it. It doesn't, it isn't justifiable the cost of this because I could get a thinner Max Q laptop with same performance identical specs that a has two ram ports so i can upgrade to 64 gigs or whatever rather than 16 gigs built onto the motherboard and one slot and on top of that they often have hard drive bays but you know that's not the end of the world the big thing is they would have been thinner and because they're thinner i can carry an additional external monitor one of those portable ones that would have given me two 15 inch or two 17 inch displays and they could both be at 4K. So I like it. I don't like it enough to have paid the amount of money that I've paid. The other thing that miffs me off a little bit that's currently being sorted out is that this laptop was bought from Scan and Scan advertised it as being a 2080 Super, not a 2080 Super Max Q. And I called them and I'm currently going through it with them if I scroll down to specifications, unless they've changed the website since yesterday, which they still haven't, you see there, it says it's not Max-Q, but it is a Max-Q GPU. And the non-Max-Q is significantly less powerful. Uh, sorry, the non-Max-Q is significantly more powerful than the Max-Q GPU. And Overclockers UK also has the same listing error. It seems to be that potentially the manufacturer Asus have given the wrong information to the resellers. So, you know, there's been pros and cons, and I'm a little bit sad at this laptop because it promised so much, but just the compromises are just not that great. One thing I do like, which most laptops have in these sorts of performance ranges, is the ability to charge through USB-C, and that means I don't have to drag around the big brick all the time. But I would rather have seen two USB-C ports so that I could use one for charging and one for dongles or whatever and potentially even heck have two USB-C ports so that I could run two power adapters because actually it would be more convenient to bring two USB-C bricks that I can use for other stuff than to bring one proprietary power adapter and so yeah that's where we are USB-C can carry to 100 watts and this brick I believe is 180 let me check uh, it's upside down. No, it's 240. Okay, so there would be a bit of a compromise on running off a of USB-C of 40 watts less. I could live with that. I think that it would be manageable even if it sips the battery a little bit. But uh, yeah, there we are. This is a engineer's perspective on the Asus Cephrus Duo. What I'd like to see is the screen be more angleable. I'd like to see the screen be brighter because it's just not that bright, especially in a workshop environment. 
I'd like to see either some ridges on the numpad or some, maybe even something like Blackberry. I think it was Blackberry or one of a manufacturer did where the keys themselves were defined and the surface as a whole acted as a, a mouse pointer. Because the fact is most people are going to use an external mouse if they're gaming or whatever, or even me as an engineer doing CAD. So having the bumps for a touchpad I think I would have preferred because they're more likely to want to use it as a numpad and a mouse for convenience than as a mouse and a numpad for convenience when the whole purpose of a numpad has kind of been lost. Uh, sound is great. It's It could go louder. My Alienware goes way louder. Um, the audio quality on this is very good though and I'd say it actually has better treble than the Alienware but still it's nice to have great audio quality but when you can't hear it like in a workshop environment audio quality doesn't mean very much um and yeah uh, i struggle to think oh <laughs> there is one other thing and this is a doozy all this space all this wonderful space where's the flicking ah where is the f ah I, it annoys me where is the webcam you know you've got all this space Dell, all these other people, they have these super thin bezels which still have a camera. Where is the webcam? What a weird compromise. Very strange. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching.